I have so many mixed emotions right now. It's taken about a month, okay? Just over a month, and I have finally built my Threadripper PC. For the past month and a bit, I've been throwing clips into a bin, not literally a bin. But I am now able to put them all together and create a video for you guys showing you the build process. I did some mess ups along the way. I had software issues, all this kind of stuff because it's a new platform. I'm going to run into things like that. But also, this is the first time I did liquid cooling, like proper liquid cooling. I've done like closed loop before. Closed loop is easy, bang it on, done. But this, you have to bend the tubes, all this kind of stuff. Like it was just something I've never done before. And I've always been afraid to look at someone doing it and all this kind of But since I've done it, I really find it's not that difficult to do so. Now, I did mess up in a few places. For example, some of the tubes, for example, are easy. But they work and they look great when the side panels on and even when you look at it from the side normally which you'll see the final product soon <sighs> let's jump into the bill
That is fucking sick! <laughs> Alright, here we go. Power, are you ready? Oh, the motherboard's lighting up. Power button. I don't know what just happened. Shit. Okay, so that doesn't work either. <gasps> Oh my... What the fuck? Fuck in the air! And there she is, the Threadripper PC. Now, she's not finished. She really isn't finished just for a few reasons and only today which is probably like four or five days from actually putting it together and first turning it on did I actually manage to get this PC running properly at least as it should. As I said I ran into so many issues and we're about to talk about all of those because some companies need to be told off all right and I like telling people off. But before we do that I'm gonna take off the side panel so you can see it. There you go. Better look at it. Looks nice, doesn't it? I just realized my temps have gone down. So my CPU temp currently says it's 24C. Uh, how much of that is 100% true? I don't know. Because I did actually... Let's, let's step back. Let's step back. I'll complain about that in a second. First things first. This was an expensive PC. Yes. Why did I build such a stupid PC? Because I've always wanted to have a top-end PC. I've always skimped out and got a little bit less than what I want to because I didn't have the money to do so. And I thought, you know what? It's for work. I'm gonna properly bash out a PC and this was the result. The fans actually changed color, they're RGB LEDs and also uh, the, the actual RAM and the motherboard itself. Let me just- Now this is the first thing to say that doesn't work properly. The RGB lights. Now I've unplugged the controller and the reason I've done that, let me, let me just show you. If I plug this in like you should, for some reason the back ones flicker no matter like what color I put them on. I use the color, they just for some reason flicker. I don't know why. Good news is it's just this little bit here. Once I unplug it, it's fine. So I know it's this, which is good because I'm actually going to have to get something to power the two front fans. There's two fans at the front, if you may remember. Those are not on. They're not powered. They're not on. This fan at the bottom, not plugged in. So I'm going to get Corsair's little Commander Pro. That's going to be able to control the lighting of the fans that I have set up now. Honestly, only needs these here. And honestly, I think I could run this, for the most part, with fans off. It's that cool. The loudest part of the system is the pump. And that thing is pretty quiet. And it makes it overall quieter than my old PC. Which had less power, right? Jumping to my mess ups, I did two significant ones. Uh, there are a few little bits, like for example, I kind of went off a little bit with the drill there and it scraped it a little bit. But with the side panel on, you can't see it. And also from a distance you can't see it and I could always paint over it, whatever. Anyway, it's the major kind of mess ups. Of course, this was my first time liquid cooling and I messed up some of the tubes, but I did do some testing. Now, originally when I bought the system, uh, the whole setup, the whole liquid cooling thing, I used EK Blocks Configurator, EK Water Blocks Configurator, which meant that uh, they send you all the stuff that they would recommend. And obviously I went with a different kind of res. Uh, it does have a few bubbles in it, but honestly, I kind of weirdly like it and obviously I can let it go after a time and drain it because it was my first time filling it I just didn't want to bother redoing because I need I need my PC for video but I got acrylic then I did some research and found that PETG is the best way to go so this system now has PETG in it which was a lot easier to work with so much easier this was also my first time drilling the case and it was actually kind of fun at points I did not take the motherboard out and stuff and I was kind of wary that I, when I did that but for the most part I just t took the motherboard out for the big drilling. One of them that is gonna make people cringe is actually when I put thermal paste 
onto the graphics card. Now, okay, um, you can scream at me all you like. Uh, I did redo it, I promise. I just did not realize for the fact that the CPU one you had to press down so hard to get any out. And the GPU just slipped on out. From the, Both from, you know, they came in the EK package. So I was like, I was expecting it to handle the same consistency wise. And it just went, and I was like, oops. When it came to the GPU, they gave me a lot more screws than I needed. And I assume that was for different kits or something. Anyway, I started screwing in the large screw first. Because that was the only different screw that you need to screw in that's different. And it was way too big. It was like double the size than it should have been. And so I screwed it, screwed it, screwed it, screwed it. It kept going. And then the top snapped off. So now there is a screw stuck in my GPU, which means when I want to, if I want to take off the water block, which I probably won't, I'm going to have to drill into my GPU. But it's only at the end, uh, the corner, so it's not too bad. When my PC boot at the beginning. Now, uh, this could have been a number of things. I don't know exactly if, it fit, if this was the reason, but whatever. I did play around for ages, you know, reseating RAM, all that kind of thing. Uh, taking out things and making sure it was okay. Swapped out the power supply. Still did the same thing. And in the end, I think what it was, was just me needing to push cables in a little bit more. The top CPU cables that I had plugged in, I had I had uh, the 6 plus 2 pins plugged in instead of the dedicated 8 pins. So we need two of those. So I swapped the one out that was wrong and it booted. Then I had some issues, which I think is honestly to do with X399 and all that kind of stuff. But then I booted and it kept going off, on, off, on. Reset the RAM again, booted fine. I did have many an issue at that point when I was setting the RAM to 3, 200 megahertz, all this kind of stuff. Like it was absolute hell to work with that in the beginning but after a while after the bios updates all this kind of thing I, it, it went pretty smoothly after doing some overclocking and playing around with it this thing is now running four gigahertz on all 16 cores 32 threads whatever you want to say and it is running 3200 megahertz on the ram no issues whatsoever plowing along and honestly you could you i could probably run this this thing is so flexible i i've not really i've not really done much overclocking in the past only little bits here and there and it was all air cooled stuff so i couldn't push it too far but this thing it's so flexible because it's on a liquid block i can just bump this thing up to max and everything if i want like i i reckon i could get a stable 4.2 easily and the ram i was going to get higher but i'm glad i got this ram i cheaped out a little bit if you want to say i got 32 gigs of ram because I, I had 64 last time but i wanted the rgb but now for the main event everything was running fine and i got windows up it was running it was running so quick so quick on the m.2 ssds if you want all the specs i'll list them down below restart the pc back up again and it's starting to stutter. This is the same kind of stutter that my Dell XPS 15 had, which is why I swapped it out for a MacBook. Uh, the de it was almost like it was thermal throttling, like ridiculous thermal throttling. So I put the clocks down to base, the, the, the voltage down to base, the RAM down to base, tried reinstalling Windows, tried reseating things, tried pulling things out. I tried absolutely everything. And this was what took me the longest time. Everything else, Bam, done, easy. I thought, you know what? I don't understand this. When I first install Windows, perfect. And then bang, it's after restart, nope, no more. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I think, okay, maybe it's some software I installed. Maybe it's just old software that's not compatible properly or whatever, because I have quite a bit of old software which I use for sending Discord's audio, for example, down one channel, which means I can record that specific channel and make it just flawless. So I removed that and also, for example, Premiere Pro, absolutely bogged down it was so laggy to use the interface it rendered perfect it was so quick but to use the interface it was awful and i had this random stutter when i was playing games my games for example i was when i was playing games for example dragon dragon's dogma which is a game i've been wanting to get back into for a while i was getting solid 60 fps this was very with a very frame rate on this game's supposed to be very well optimized like after updates i believe so like, randomly dropping frames like dropping like randomly is for perfect 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 <laughs> down to about 10 fps and i'm like what the hell i have spent so much money on this piece what is going on and you always know that in your back of your head you're like is it because i maybe i, I drilled in the case and chippings went somewhere or did, did i short something have i broken something is it the bios i downgraded the bios nothing upgraded the bios nothing and i got to the final issue and it's gonna absolutely piss you off because it pissed me off as well. The software that was absolutely destroying my PC in performance, making it absolutely unusable, when this should be like the, the quickest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life, which it is now. Asus 
Asus, whatever you want to call it, you need to fix your fucking AI suite. Now, I love you because I spent a goddamn a lot, of mo a lot of money on this motherboard. The motherboard alone is like £510. All of this was bought on my own account because I wanted to use it for work. First got suspicious when I started, as I said, uninstalling things to see what was going on. I couldn't uninstall it, so it's like, please restart if you want to, you know, there's way, uh, an awaiting installation. So I restarted, came back up, wouldn't uninstall. Okay, that's a bit weird. Google how to remove. And some people were saying, you can't. There's a removal tool, but it's for the old version, version 2. We're on version 3 now. It's absolutely impossible to remove this fucking shitty software. So I'm like, okay, that's a bit dodgy, don't you think? I think this should be able to be removed. If you want to know, all it does is control fans, like the fan speed, which you can do in the BIOS. It has BIOS updates, and I think that's pretty much it. It does a few other little bits, but it's all technically useless, you know, junk garbage. The kind of stuff you get pre-installed and you don't really care, but if you build a PC, you, you don't want that stuff on it. Anyway, I imagine this software is ridiculously useful. It's very useful, in fact, the fan speed control. I found that so useful, very, very useful. But not when the fact it was absolutely ruining everything about this PC. Reinstall Windows, it just, for some reason, ended up on a black screen. I don't know why. Reinstalled it again. Fourth installation on the same drive. I did install it multiple other times on other drives to see if it was the drive, maybe. Reinstall all my applications again, all this kind of stuff, and not install any of the provided drivers from them themselves. The only drivers I searched up were the graphics driver from NVIDIA to get all the tools. And I also got all my little stuff like my microphone Scarlet kind of setup here that I'm using and Elgato, all that stuff. Everything else was picked up by Windows itself. That's what I, I love that about Windows 10. I restart the PC because that's usually when the issues occurred when it came back up again. And it was fine. No problems. It's now absolutely blitzing everything. It's insane. Solid overclock like i was wondering is it my overclock is it something i'm installing is it something that i've broken while in like building it and it was the fucking fan software every five seconds it would just tank in performance go down to like 100 megahertz per core which is still quite a lot for 36 it was rendering it useless so if you get a Fedrefa cpu with this exact same motherboard watch out for the dodgy software that comes with it and I, I feel bad because everybody that reviewed this, this system, the Threadripper CPU, probably also, in, some, some of them probably also installed the software and had the same issues. And nobody spoke about it. Hans is here and he's speaking about it. You're welcome. Anyway, I'm hyped. This is the best PC I have ever built and will probably build, build, ever build for a long while because, um... I don't particularly want to do it again for a while, but there are a few little bits, as I said, I need to do. For example, I need to get the fan controller, and I also need to buy, which is really an also annoying, Corsair don't provide the little switch box separately to control these fans. So what I need to do to control my two extra fans is buy another set of two or three, depending on which size I go with, 50 pound fans, right? So I can get the little controller again. Then I've got some useless fans that are RGB fans that don't actually RGB because I can't plug them. Unless I want to put them somewhere. But I've got enough bloody fans for a liquid core PC that doesn't need them at all. <sighs> Chill. It's over. We're done. All PC, all videos, full stop, will be recorded and rendered on this piece other than my laptop when I go away. Most of my videos will be done on this machine. And I am so happy because it's just plowing. Like, I run a game and it's like, so what? I don't, I don't feel anything. It's just the best thing ever. And uh, I'm, if people want to see benchmarks and stuff, just to give you an example, Fire Strike, I ran it when I first set it up. This was stock clocks, everything. I got 18,000 and something. Uh, and just to compare with everybody else, basically, that, that I searched up, I, I did the whole comparison online. And it came up with people that got like 16,000, or if I said 15,000, something like that. And I was the top with a single 1080 and a dual 1080. This has one 1080. So I was quite happy about that, honestly. Fred Ripper, how about we go rip some of this video now? Because I need to I need to make this video for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the PC. My monitors went off. Let me know what you think of the PC. I am so happy with it, and I'm so glad I spent the money. But the stress of building it, I don't want to experience that again. And honestly, it wouldn't have existed for like if, if Asus's fan shit was up to date. So uh, if you want to tweet them, 
that would be that would be nice just tell them to update their software again i love them i love this stuff i'm gonna keep buying this stuff but i'm gonna watch out for things and the first thing i'm gonna check whenever i install a new cpu or whatever i'm gonna get rid of that shit that's, that's fucking up my pc anyway Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, smash like, subscribe if you are new, and hopefully we uh, we won't build it, be building another PC for a long time with liquid liquid cooling anyway, because a normal PC, you can just bang that together in a day. This took me like a month and a half. I look at you and you cause me frustration, but at the same time, you beautiful. Peace.